Welcome to Obsidian for Tabletop RPGs. Let's learn how to use the tool. Alright, g'day guys and welcome back tonight to another Obsidian video. Tonight we're going to be talking about PDFs. Now, PDFs are a pretty big topic in the TTRPG world. Uh, it's a common format that's used to obviously get your hands on adventures and rules and all that sort of stuff. Unless you're coming from D&D 5th edition. If you're coming from D&D 5th edition, it's a digital format of something that some companies release their format in. Wizards of the Coast is not one of them. Um, but if you're going over to Pezo, they certainly are. I'm swimming in PDFs now that I've started playing Pathfinder 2nd edition. Uh, Pezo give out PDFs for all of well don't give out, they sell PDFs for all of their content. Um, and we're gonna be having a look tonight at a PDF or a couple of PDFs that are actually released for free every year through the Free RPG Day. Um, if you don't know what Free RPG Day is, it's this fantastic day of the year where they actually go away and like a couple of companies will go, we're gonna release a free TTRPG adventure or supplement or you know something. Um, and it's all designed to get new people into the hobby and into the, the game. So it's a fantastic uh, sort of thing for us to go ahead and uh, support. Um, TTRPG Day is the 17th of June, um, which is, you know, that's uh, pretty good for me, all right, because uh, my birthday is actually the 18th of June. So um, I usually, we used to celebrate with a free TTRPG um, session on my birthday. Um, that used to be the Pezo, uh, what was it? It was the um, Weeby Goblins. If you haven't played Weeby Goblins, I highly recommend it. It's a good laugh, especially with a few drinks around the table. Now, Without that, let's jump in and have a look at how we can use PDFs. Now, what you're looking at here is the um, the TTRPG Vault. This is a um, Patreon um, benefit for the people who obviously follow me on Patreon. Uh, we're gonna come down here to YouTube series and then into working with PDFs. And you can see here that I've made a, uh, a bit of an example file. All right, so PDFs are relatively simple. Okay, you can uh, bring up a PDF um, and you can just drag them into your vault. All right, so if you've got another folder where your PDFs are sitting, you can just drag that in, right, inside of here, and it's going to then cut me through. Now, I've already done that, so I won't go ahead and do it this time, all right, because it'll create a duplication in my vault. But if you just drag it into a note, then what it does is it sticks it in your assets folder, okay? Uh, for anyone who doesn't know what I'm talking about, it's actually got attachments folder, but you can right click on a folder and go set as attachment folder. And what that does is it tells Obsidian that this is where I want all of my external files to be stored. So if you're adding an image, it goes straight to the attachments folder. If you're adding a PDF, it goes straight to the attachments folder. And as you can see here, I've added in three, all right, and they've gone straight to the attachments folder. Now, inside of Obsidian, you can see here, all right, it's basically coming straight through and showing me renders of these um, these adventures which is fantastic and these are all free adventures by the way guys you can go and create yourself a Paizo account and you can go and get copies of these from their website now in order to see PDFs there is something we need to do so come here to settings Actually, I don't know if this is necessary anymore but I'm gonna do it anyway files and links and detect all file extensions so you can see I've got that turned on that allows me to see the type of file extensions that obviously we're going to use in our vault today all right, so once we've got that come through, actually, let's just have a look at excluded files. I've never even looked into here. Now we can actually exclude files from coming through. Interesting, I might play with that later. But let's just focus. So we've got detect all file extensions enabled, getting out of there. All right, now we're back and we can see, obviously, that you know we can now see the images. We can now see the PDFs. Uh, let's just have a little bit of explore, like what does a PDF look like? So we've got the uh, page by page view. All right, it's quite easy to click. You can see it's quite quick. You can highlight, all right, which means you can copy, I imagine. Let's just test that. Yep, you can copy. All right, you can also come in here and go into chapter mode. All right, so that makes it easier to navigate. All right, so that makes it quite, quite easy. You've got your, your zoom. You've got your uh, your page count. What's this one do? Fit to page. There we go. Rotate anti-clockwise. We're not going to do that. You can download or print. And there's also a two-page view. All right, that could be quite handy. Um, there is an option to turn annotations here on and off, and this would really depend on whether you've actually opened up the PDF externally in another program and added annotations. Uh, there are plugins that you can use to do this. Uh, there's also plugins for highlighter. 
I didn't find any really fantastic plugins though. Um, there was one that was a paid option, um, which is a first for me. I haven't really come across a paid Obsidian plugin before, but it certainly seems to be out there. Um, but I haven't played with any of these tonight. We're just going to have a look at real sort of like native, like this is what it looks like. All right, so as you can see, it's quite easy to sort of go through, but how do we make this useful, right? Because you could have your PDF on another screen uh, opened in uh, Adobe Reader or something, or whatever your PDF viewer is, and that would be fine, right? So you could just do that. So what benefit do you have inside of Obsidian? All right, so this is how we can use it, all right? So you can link to a PDF just like you do with a normal sort of uh, page. And I think I'm missing the PDF here. All right, so you can link in here and say, this is what this looks like. This is, uh, I want to link to a PDF. Now, anyone who's familiar with Obsidian will go, oh, I recognize that format because that's how you link to a normal note or an image, right? So this is saying I want to provide a link to this PDF file. This is saying I want to link to this PDF file, but I want to include a, uh, a preview of that inside of my notes. So it'll actually render the page. And then here, this is where it starts to get cool. So here we're saying we want to link to this PDF file, but we want to link specifically to page five. Now that is where I think it's starting to get interesting. So if we combine all that information together here, what we have is we have a, I want to link to the uh, Little Trouble and Big Echelon um, PDF file. All right, we want to render it because we have the explanation mark at the start, but we also want to skip straight to page five. Now I'm in edit mode here. All right, if we go into the render mode or the, uh, the read mode, we can see that that renders that, all right, and goes straight to page five. Now for anyone who's just new to this, just so you know, like these little uh, ticks here. These basically mean this is code and it's actually saying don't use this. This is just for you to understand what this looks like when you read it. Please don't add those in. You should remove those when you're using that code. And as you can see, I don't have them here. So therefore it renders straight away. Now that was relatively quick as well. All right. So you can see it does load page one first, just very quickly. All right. We'll do that again. Come back in. See page one, and then it skips to the page that it's been defined, but that works really quite well. Then you could read this through. So this would be a really good way for, I guess anyone who does this a lot, um, to avoid the data entry of putting an adventure or a module in, okay? Because you've got the text here. Um, in this case, Paizo, like they give us fantastic PDFs, like you can go and purchase them from the website. Um, you don't necessarily have to transcribe word for word every adventure into your um, your campaign manager if you don't want to. Now, obviously I'm the sort of guy who does, right? I, I transcribe the whole damn thing into Obsidian and I run it from there. And then what I do is I replace all of these with stat blocks and encounter blocks and I make changes and I link to uh, magic items and all that sort of stuff. But you don't have to do that. This might be a much quicker way for people to go, you know what, I want to run this adventure. I'm going to just stick it inside of my vault. I'm going to link to it. And then what you can do is you can use this to go, all right, well, this chapter is related to this chapter in the PDF or this page in the PDF. So I'm just going to create a link here from whatever page I'm doing or from wherever I am and off we go. Now, keep in mind as well, you do not have to have the explanation mark and just so we can see the difference there. You can see it doesn't have an explanation mark now, so it's just rendering that as a link. And then obviously that is now displaying a, uh, a hover over, or we could click and go through to that as well. Now let's just do a test here, and live tests on videos always goes well. I'm just gonna rename this, all right? So see it says show to players, all right? That's because I've written that. You could actually say, um, little trouble page five. Okay, and that will then rename to Little Trouble page five. Skip straight to page five, off you go. The, the hover over probably isn't too useful for reading because obviously it's too small, um, but you can obviously click on it and then have access to it and off you go. So that works really well. So you're gonna leave that off for now. Let's just leave that off. Uh, rename to link. And then you guys can obviously use that in the example. Um, all right, so the other thing that I've actually got here, it's just a, an idea, was 
With data view, um, obviously, you know, we've used data view before. You can use that to say, I want to display a list of these sort of things in my vault. Now you can do that as well with um, PDFs. So found this code here um, in one of the forums. So this is some data view JS code. And as you can see, um, if we go through and read this, it's getting the files where extension equals PDF. It's creating a list of those files um, and then creating a file path to them. So if we render that, what that does is that then converts uh, and automatically gives us a list of all the PDF files that are in my vault. So we can see here, we've got a fistful of flowers, we've got threshold of knowledge, and we've got a little trouble in big ash, ash blonde. So they're all free PDFs, um, you know, that you can obviously go and get yourself, but you know, I can link to them all in my vault. Um, see how quick that was to actually create this automatic list of all these things that are in my vault, which is fantastic. Now we can go a bit further that further than that, sorry. So with data view JS, we can actually come down and say, all right, show me a list of all the PDFs, but I want you to show me a list of the PDFs that are in a specific folder. So we come here and we have a look at this one. All right, so it's data view JS query again. Um, it's a constant uh, get files and then filter that files on anything with PDFs and anything that's in this folder. Okay, so Z underscore assets is this folder here. As you can see, I've got three PDFs in this folder. It doesn't seem to be a lot of anything else in there. All right, and then what that does is that lists all the PDFs that are in that folder. So as you can see, this matches that. Okay, so it's just another useful thing. You could have a, um, a landing page with all of your PDFs, for example. Um, you know, that automatically populates and generates. And as you add more PDFs into this thing, it will just come through and list them here. Um, there might be some smart people out there who can go further maybe. Maybe there's a way to actually have the files and have like some tagging on the PDFs. I don't know, I'm sure there's some cool things you can do, but that is a really simple way to get a list of all the PDFs in your vault. And I think that's quite simple and easy to use. So yeah, anyway, as I said, I don't use PDFs personally, all right? Well, I do, but I copy them in, um, and I'll probably do another video on that at some point of like how to copy a PDF in. Uh, it'll be a long video, but I'm sure someone will watch it. Um, I think this could be quite beneficial to people in a quite quick way on how to bring in PDFs, how to use them inside of this, uh, and really save themselves some time so they don't have to you know, go and find another folder with another bunch of stuff in it. It's all in one place, it's easy to use, and obviously off you go. Uh, you could be linking to magic items, you could be linking to monsters through this way, anything to sort of save you time, right, and just make it really a lot of quick. Um, but that's basically it, all right? There's really not a whole lot to this. Uh, this is out of the box support. You don't need any plugins for anything up here. Um, these ones here do require, um, I'll put this in here, requires data view plugin. Just so there's no confusion. All right, and then obviously this will be available to all my Patreon so you can go through and uh, use these notes yourself. Um, what I would recommend you do is copy these things into a template. So you can just press like, for me it's Alt T, trigger template, uh, insert PDF catalog, something like that I might call it. All right, so that way it just comes through. Uh, but anyway, that's it. PDFs are easy to work with. Um, I think that could be quite a simple solution for people. Um, could be quite useful, so anyway. If it is, please do like and subscribe. Um, if you do want to jump in with my Patreons, please do feel free. I'll have links in the description below. It does give you access, obviously, to a Discord, which is where there's a lot of chatter happening on a daily basis about Obsidian. Uh, lots of people asking for help and getting help, and the community is really sort of pulling together and helping each other get through all of the learning curve that's associated with a tool that's really as big and complex as this one. And it gets you access to this vault all right, with all of the tutorials and code that you can just cut and paste into your own notes and off you go. So anyway, guys, this has been working with PDFs. I hope that is useful. Have a fantastic day and I will speak to you on the socials. Good night.